Hello, and welcome back to our series, Learning Music Online. Today we are going to lay the foundation for understanding phrases and sentences, inversions, and cadences. Let's go. In order to understand what a phrase is, we must understand what separates one phrase from the next. Each phrase ends with a cadence, which is a specific chord progression that creates some kind of pause in the music, whether a strong stopping point, barely a break in the music, or somewhere in between. The strength of a cadence is based on several things. What chords are used, what inversion these chords are in, and what the melody is doing over the chords. Wait, you are probably asking, what is an inversion? Well, basically an inversion is when you have a note other than the root of a chord in the bass. The bass line can be played by a variety of instruments. A tuba, a euphonium, a double bass, an electric bass, a piano, a bassoon, any instrument that is lower than the other instruments playing it. Let's take a look at a C major chord. The main notes in order of a C major are C, E, G. When placed in order from lowest to highest, this is called root position. Think roots as in the bottom of a tree. This position is always the most stable, and when you write the symbol for this chord, you don't include anything because it's implied. From here, you start taking the bottom notes and throwing them somewhere above. The simplest version of this is to change the chord to E, G, C. This is called first inversion because you've moved only one note. Now, of course, in practice, the order of the notes above the bass can be much more complicated, but the inversion only cares about what's in the bass and what are the total notes above it, not the order of those notes. This is written with a little six next to its symbol because the interval between the bass note, E, and the root, C, is now a sixth. Let's throw the next note up. This puts G in the bass and gives us G, C, E. This is called second inversion and is usually called the least stable of the inversions as it feels like it wants to move somewhere. The symbol is written with a 6-4 next to it because the root is a fourth above and the third is a sixth above the bass. When the second inversion is applied to the one chord of a piece, it is so common for it to resolve to a five chord in root position, meaning G, B, D, that it's actually usually called the 5-6-4 chord. It goes to the five so often it isn't even considered a separate chord and is considered a motion that's leading to the five. The concept of chords not being important for what they actually are, and instead being important for where they lead or how they move the progression, is an important concept to keep in mind when you eventually start analyzing music. Not everything is intended to stand on its own and only make sense when given context. There are inversions beyond second inversion, but those involve seventh chord, ninth, ninth chords, etc., and we don't need those right now. What we will now get into is the idea of a cadence. To put it simply, a cadence is some kind of a stopping point in the music. Later, we will define a cadence as the end of a phrase, but for now, we will stick with the first definition. Most cadences involve a dominant, and what this dominant looks like, and whether or not it resolves to anything, will tell you what the cadence is. The first main category involves the authentic cadences. These are cadences that have a 5-1 motion. The two kinds of authentic cadences are perfect authentic cadences and imperfect authentic cadences. In a perfect authentic cadence, the chords are in root position, giving you a bass motion of so in the five chord to do in the one chord. This is clear sounding as shown here. Notice, in the perfect authentic cadence, the top voice is also do. That's very important and will help us define an imperfect authentic cadence, which is not one of the prior examples. If the 5 and 1 chords are in root position, but the top voice is not DO, it's imperfect. If one or both of the chords are inverted, it's imperfect. The oddest one is if you sub out the 5 chord for the other dominant function chord, the diminished 7. It is also imperfect as there is no so do motion anywhere. I know, I know this is a lot, but it gets a little easier for the next cadence type, the half cadence. This is simply a cadence ending on a five chord. The 
This feeling of incompleteness, of stopping before you really get to an ending point, is always used to move the music forward. When used in the middle of a larger phrase structure, it pushes from one section to the next. It can be used when changing keys to push from one larger portion of a piece to the next, and it can even be used at the end of a whole movement of a multi-movement piece to push from one movement to the next movement. When a piece changes key completely to the five, one of the most common key changes, it's to utilize this idea on a much larger scale, but it's all the same purpose. The next cadence type is actually incredibly common in pop and folk music, and it is the plagal cadence, where a phrase ends with a 4-1 motion instead of a 5-1. If you recall, the 4 has the subdominant function, and is supposed to lead to the dominant. In the case of the plagal cadence, the subdominant leads to the tonic, a very odd sound when compared to the other cadences, but one you are probably quite familiar with. In fact, even back in ye olden times, this was known as the Amen cadence, because so many church songs tagged on a plagal cadence at the end of a piece on the word Amen, the A ah being the four and the men being the tonic. The last cadence type is the deceptive cadence, and this is where a 5 chord leads to anything that is not the 1 chord. Generally, this is the 6 chord, which has a tonic function, but the opposite tonality of the 1 chord. In a major key, the 1 is major, and the 6 is minor. In a minor key, the 1 is minor, and the 6 major. This shift in tonality can be jarring if you are expecting one of the other cadences, and thus it is deceiving to the audience. It's a common sound to us, as pop and trap music absolutely loves ending on the 6 chord, but within the context of the other cadences is quite jarring. Because of the large amount of new terms this week, we'll leave it at that. Stay safe, drink a lot of water, and try to enjoy the weather. I love you all.